Hi guys and welcome back. This week we're looking at the cowrie. It's a New Zealand conifer, New Gym, a part of the gymnosperms. And of course cowrie's botanical name is Agathis australis. Very popular tree, especially in the early 1900s as it was logged non-stop, almost to the point where it became endangered. It was a very valuable tree for construction, boat building, and also we had the gum diggers. These were the guys that dug trenches to get the the sap of the cowrie tree that it sort of fossilized a little bit and that was used for jewelry and it was used for paints and, and uh, varnishes you can see this is this is the cowrie tree here and you can see there's the sap coming down for it to turn into gum it needs about a thousand years usually in those trenches where it could just sort of compact it's a very tall tree and around it gets up to those sort of 50 meter heights and the width of the trunk can get up you know around about that four to five meters are very very large so the leaves are quite unusual as because it's a conifer you'd think it would be like all sort of needle like but it's actually got quite fleshy thick leaves and when it's in its youngest state you can see it's almost got a, like a ready tinge to the leaves the bark when it grows you can see it there it's got a very sort of hammered and dented look that's all part of a a protection program from the tree so it doesn't have epiphytes those are the plants that grow on trees growing on them and there's the those bits of bark will peel off and end up down on the on the uh, forest floor now early on it starts off as more of a cone shaped conifer like your standard uh, cone shaped conifer and as it gets older it tends to sort of change into more of a spreading habitat especially at the top becomes a little bit unruly looking so quite different now the leaves you see are quite fleshy and there they are in the full sun looking nice and green and they're all there designed to sort of um, help the plant through to, to conserve moisture so if we look at the reproduction it's been a conifer it does have cones and this is the female cone and if you think of the word agathis, this was the Greek terminology that sort of was describing that cone as a ball of spool or twine. This is the male uh, cone and that is the thing that produces the pollen. The pollen then goes up to the female cone and it sets its seed in there and the seed is protected until the point where it's all nicely um, ready and ripe and then the cone will open up and the seed the seeds are winged and then the, the seeds will basically fly off like a helicopter fashion up to around about 30 to 50 meters away they do require full sun um, although we did see them growing there the seedlings in sort of a bit of a shade they also like warm temperatures so this is like a warm temperate climate to, uh, conifer you normally think of conifers being used to snow but these don't like it they are like the warmth they also like a reasonable amount of moisture and reasonable fertile soil free draining soil to grow in not a not really what I call a popular plant for landscaping but certainly a very iconic conifer and tree for New Zealand the, the New Zealand kauri last thing I'd just like to say the tallest one is in New Zealand is a, is a one called Tani Mahuta and that trunk girth is about 13.77 meters with a total height of 51.2 meters. One other thing is it does suffer from a disease called carry dieback, which is basically a phytophthora disease, a sort of one that is a sawborne born pathogen, which can be spread very easily uh, to the carries through because the carries are sort of a little bit shallow uh, roots that will feed in a bit of a um, in the leaf litter they do have other sort of tap roots as well to keep the stability of the tree and that's something to be aware of so that's the carry guys and uh, hopefully you find that interesting and we'll see you in the next vid